Hey guys, Lex here again with another brake job installation, bus rotors. This is my 2014 Jeep Grand Cherokee, uh, 3.6 liter I believe. We're gonna do the rotors, we're gonna do the brake pads. Um, these were actually never done yet. Got, car got 55,000 miles on it. So honestly, they don't even look that bad. So what are you gonna need before we get started? Obviously, you're gonna need a brand new rotor, some pads, I actually got the front set on eBay, I believe from Fast Source Auto Parts for about 95 bucks. So, can't beat that deal. You're gonna need a couple little screwdrivers, something thin, like a pick with a hook maybe to remove a seal that's up here. I'll show you guys that in a minute. You're gonna need a hex socket. Uh, I believe the car needs a 12. Uh, I didn't have a 12, so I'm going with a 10. It should fit. You're gonna need a 13 16th socket head um, to remove the caliper housing of the rotor. Uh, some brushes to clean the uh, rust off. Brake cleaner, you wanna clean the rotor before you install it, there is grease on it. Um, flathead screwdriver, a hammer for the stubborn parts, and some brake lubricant. This pretty quiet, possibly. Gloves, rags, I'm not gonna use gloves, but always recommend it. So let's get started. So like I said, first we have to remove the seal over here. If you don't remove the seal, the road is actually not gonna come off. So I'm gonna take my little copper brush here. Get all this gunk off. Now I wanna get in here. This is like the most stubborn part, but it's manageable. So save this, cause you're gonna need it for later. You wanna clean it up a little, wipe it up, whatever. I'm gonna put it right here. We're gonna pop this clip off now. And how you do that, take your screwdriver, wedge it against it. See how I'm pushing it in? And just slide it right out. So we're gonna save that for later. Now we're gonna get back here. Uh, take your little flathead screwdriver. We're gonna pop these caps off. And then there's one on the bottom. Actually, I just popped that off right over my hand. So that's what a hex is gonna go for screwing. But before we do that, we're gonna get in here with your flathead screwdriver. And we're gonna push the piston back into the caliper using the old brake pads. So it's easier to install the new pads later. They are gonna be bigger so you're gonna need more space. There is a compression tools to do this, which I don't have. One thing you can use, if you don't do this part right now with a screwdriver, you can use a C-clamp and a piece of wood and you'll compress it that way. Since I'm junking the rotor and I'm the brake pads, I don't care. I'm gonna shove this in there and just give it some pressure. Push it this way a little bit and I think this will be good. If you wanna now check it out in here. You got all that space. So now we should be good to remove uh, the first section of the caliper housing, which we're gonna do with this guy. So hex nut, there's gonna be one here and one here on the bottom. Actually went pretty easy. They're not um, as tight as you would think. Uh, one thing that's also recommended is getting a um, um, bungee or some kind of wire to tie the caliper up because this thing is heavy. You don't want it hanging on the hoses. So definitely don't forget that part. You wanna push it in there. 
push this guy out a little bit because you're gonna need that space too. Now I'm gonna do the bottom one. You could have actually left it in before you do the bottom, so. That was a nice sound. So I got my bungee. I'm gonna pop this guy up right now. That is stubborn. There we go. So this is the old pads over here. 55,000 miles, they're not bad, but yeah, this definitely has to be changed. You can feel it's not smooth anymore. It's definitely below five millimeters. So we're gonna pop this guy off. Yeah, you wanna clean all that up in there. I'm gonna grease this up before we put the new pads on. But for now, I'm gonna hang this guy up. this go up here this way you don't have the tension on the cables which would be bad so now we're gonna go we're gonna go in the back here now we're gonna pop these two big guys off and as I mentioned before those are 13 16 so this is what help holds the rest of the uh, caliper housing Oh yeah, this guy's stuck good. All right, so this is my trusty hammer for the big jobs. There we go. That's one. Second one. Ah, that went pretty easy. Pop these guys right off. Grab a brush, clean this up a little bit. Actually, it doesn't look that bad. Smaller brush, actually. And whenever there's gonna be the new pads, you're gonna put a little grease just to make sure we don't get any squeaking. So, same back here. So now, if you come back around. I'm gonna pop this guy off. So sometimes, especially on older cars, these can be a little stubborn. All you do is give it a tap, 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 and it should go. It didn't, so we'll go again. There we go. So for 55,000 miles, this actually doesn't look this bad, but it's time for a new one. Clean all this up. We don't want any of this rust. You can just give it sandpaper, some kind of rotary tool, whatever works for you. I got a brush, that's what I'm gonna use. Just wanna get the main rust off, so. Got a nice clean connection. <laughs> so now for the fun part, let's get the rotor on. First, we gotta clean this guy up. So get your brake cleaner. 
they also say uh, you can also use actually dish soap uh, detergent and wash it in your kitchen sink not sure if uh, your wife or family will like that so brake cleaner is a great uh, I think to use which I think almost every mechanic does so just spray it all down Other side. This guy's ready to go. This stuff dries actually pretty quick, so you don't have to worry about any residue. If you noticed, I have this whole assembly kind of rotated. Um, just to show you guys the back easier. A lot of the videos out there don't show the back, so it's a guessing game for guess, guessing game for people. So I'm hoping this helps you guys out. Normally you can straighten your wheels out, so you know you're not working on an angle. So get your rotor on. As you see, it's going to be loose because it's not stuck with the rust. So now we go back to this guy. A little gasket you removed at the beginning. Clean it up somewhat. gonna pop it right back on there we go and that's holding your rotor in place for now it's not the actual thing that's holding it so now we're gonna put this guy back on. Same process, just in the reverse now. Oops. I don't have the torque wrench, so I'm just doing this by hand, but they recommend always using a torque wrench. Oops. Oh, perfect, quick tip. So I wanna show you guys something. What I did was big mechanical error when you're working with a lot of pressure. As I was pushing this down, I was holding my hand like this. This slipped off, and I hit my hand right into the ground with my knuckles. You want to prevent that every single time. Put a lot of pressure, torquing something down. Have your palm open. This way, if you slip, your palm hits the ground flat, not your knuckles. So, perfect example by my mistake. So now, we got our new pads. I'm gonna grease everything up to make sure it's nice and lubricated so nothing squeaks on you. That's the worst thing when you brakes is when they squeak. You wanna lubricate anything that will be touching the caliper body. So these little grooves here, I'm gonna put a little brake lubricant. You can use automotive grease if you have that. Um, I'm going with this. You can use a brush. I don't have one right now, it's dark, so I'm not gonna be playing around. I'm gonna drop this guy right in here like this. And there's two different pads. You see the one with the clips? That's the one that's gonna attach to the pistons and the caliper. So now we're gonna install this guy. We're gonna lubricate all this stuff that's gonna be touching piston all around here this is to prevent any squeaking which is caused by vibration when you're braking or even just driving so let's get 
caliper back down. Don't forget to give out of this bungee later. When you take this down, make sure you have it unwound that your cables are not all twisted. That will not be good. So these are gonna snap right in there. Just like that. And remember how we push this back down? Now we'll be gonna be able to install it. If not, you would need to get your caliper compression tool and push this in more to be able to slide this on. So this should make sure your bolts are pushed back in, which we're actually gonna remove and lubricate in a second. This should just slide. Oh wait. I'm sorry, I'm not gonna to do that yet. We're gonna have to lubricate these guys right here as they're gonna be going on top of this brake pad. So a little bit here, a little bit there, and a little bit there. Now we shoot the bolts out of your way. And this will slide right on. These guys out. Put just a little bit of grease on it. As these are moving parts. Just a little bit. Now let's just tighten them back in. And you don't have to go super tight. Obviously, if you have a torque wrench, use that. tightening yet. Get them both in first. Okay, tighten this one down now. caps back on this is all assembled got the nice new pads in there everything's in one piece let's go back to the front now one last thing we're gonna do is put this clip back on so just like with any moving parts we're gonna lubricate any parts that are gonna be touching the caliper assembly a little bit here, a little bit here, bottom, push it out, and now just pull it back in, and that's it, make sure it's nice and snug, and this is not going anywhere, and that's it, you just installed a rotor on a 2014 Jeep Re Grand Cherokee, I hope this is helpful for you guys, uh, next, we're gonna do the rear, which uh, video should be coming soon. Uh, we are also have a recent video we did for an oil change for this car, which is a little different than a standard sedan. So check that out. Uh, please subscribe below, like, set that bell up, and thanks for watching. Not to mention, let's pop your hood open and loosen this guy up. Your uh, brake fluid cylinder, uh, just to relieve the pressure when you're gonna be pushing back the pistons. And don't forget to tighten it back up once you finish the job and then you can pump your brakes to tighten everything up.